Hello everyone, I'm Joy. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new, please subscribe and hit the bell so that you can get notifications when I release these videos to help you on your real estate journey. Today we have with us a guest who is gonna to talk to us about wholesaling. Guest, tell everyone your name. Yes, Quantrell Turner uh, with Executive Property Investments. I'm here in Indianapolis, Indiana. Okay, perfect. And um, just tell us a little bit about your experience in real estate. Just briefly. Yeah, um, briefly, real estate is uh, kind of something that um, I've always wanted to do. Um, as a child, you always have a, uh, a thought of owning a lot of rental properties and things of that nature. And um, I got introduced in real estate actually by accident. I wanted to be a passive investor. And uh, lo and behold, now I'm full time, 60 hours a week. I reeled you in. Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> but I, I love it. I love everything about it, the adrenaline, the drama all that comes with it and so uh, uh so that's over here and uh here at one of the properties and uh just moving forward from there okay perfect okay so for those who don't know tell us what is wholesaling yeah so um believe it or not wholesaling is done in every different type of operation um wholesaling is just where you transfer something without actually having ownership of it um way i've learned this a good way to think about it is that um Walmart does wholesaling all day where mm -hmm. they'll if I sell honey I'll tell Walmart um, I'll sell them to them for a dollar or a jar um, Walmart is agreed and they're probably going to go sell it for four dollars a jar um, so every every jar I sell to Walmart I get a dollar but Walmart's getting three dollars every sale and they never actually own the products they're just selling them mm -hmm. um, and they just pay for the buildings and things of that nature so they don't Walmart technically doesn't own anything um, but they just own the land. The same thing is true with real estate. Um, so one of the ways I love, the one thing I love about wholesaling, it is a great way to get into real estate without actually having to put any money in. Um, so you could, um, so let's say you have a property on 123 Parker Street um, and you get it under contract with the seller um, and let's say you get it for $25,000. If you find somebody else who's willing to pay 35 for it, you can sell your contract. Um, you can sell your contract that you have, and then that $10,000 mining closing costs and whatever is the difference you make. So you never technically own the property, you just sold your contract for that difference. So it's like being the middleman. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and it's being a middleman, but you have the ownership. Um, and so. Um, you could put it in your personal name. I always recommend people put it in their business name. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it's very easy. And, and the thing about it, everybody knows somebody who owns properties or Absolutely. owns a property. So it doesn't take you any marketing dollars or anything. You could wholesale by just your uncle who owns two properties that he <laughs> inherited and he's not doing anything with. That's how it happens. Word of mouth. Okay. So you said it doesn't take any marketing. Now, I know I've heard people say like, you got to build your list. You got to build a buyer's list. Like what, what do you think about that? Um, <laughs> no, see, let me give you an example. I met a guy, I was doing a project on uh, 34th street and, um, in college mm -hmm. and I met a guy who was next door and, um, he, his mom had passed away and gave him the house he lived in. And, um, and and he knew people who owned properties that were doing absolutely nothing with them. Mm -hmm. So I taught him the wholesaling. I, I gave him the contracts on how to either sell it or assign the contract. There's two ways you can sell your property assignment or you can just sell the contract outright. And he made $60,000 on one property. Wow. Of assigning it. It was, he got it for maybe 20 and sold the property for $80,000. That's awesome. Um, you know, and is that something that you can do quickly? Because, you know, everybody wants to do, you know, I want to make a million weeks. dollars in a day. So. No, it, it happened in two weeks. <laughs> okay. Somebody brought cash and they closed it in two weeks. Now, they went and rehabbed the property and they sold the property for $250,000. Mm -hmm. um, so, it's all about getting that first deal for the right price. But you got to know what it, what it can resell for. Right. Know? And um, that takes a little bit. Um, that, that's where people have the most thing. But I always recommend... If you're going to wholesale, you kind of got to get a mentor. Um, mm -hmm. I mentored a lot of people on wholesaling. Um, and generally, if I do a wholesale, we'll co-wholesale it while I'll walk you through it, show you how to do it. And um, generally, on average, every wholesale deal that I've done on average just makes about twenty-five to $5,000. Okay, that's awesome. That's an average. 
And do you have to put anything into it at all, or how does that work? You put no money into it. You, uh, at best, you might have to put a $500 earnest money down just to show the person that you're getting your A to B. There's there's two contracts. There's an A to B and then a B to C contract. Okay. Um, the A to B is just when I get in contact with the original seller and then I get a contract for them. And then my B to C is me selling it to the end buyer. Um, that end buyer can come with a loan and or cash. I always recommend cash. and. Cash and, I, and I always send them to a title company where at the end of the day they get a clear title. Okay. So I, you can always walk away with a good conscience and then the title company cuts, cuts you the check of the difference. It's a very simple process and, and you can pay for leads. I know people who spend thousands of dollars a week on leads. Personally, I've spent $1,500 on leads and that's it. And I've only did it as a trial period. Okay. But I did make a lot of money from that 1500 so for fifteen hundred dollars, um, what do they do? Put you in a list? Like how many leads would you get for that? So there's a company called Leadneck. Mm -hmm. um, Leadneck, they'll step, they'll go. And the good thing about Leadneck, um, they'll do the calling for you. They'll call sellers, and you give them the zip code you want, the areas you want. If you want tax liens, they give you a list, and then they do the calling, and they give you about twenty to thirty good leads. Okay. But you have to do the work on the pricing. Um, and once you get in contact, they don't do contracts. They only give you the leads. Well, that's um, so important, though, because some people don't want to get on the phone. Yeah. I mean, trust me. <laughs> I know. I don't want to cold call part people. is the hardest part, because as <laughs> soon as somebody says, no, I don't want a property to hang up, <laughs> it deters you. Uh, but that that's how it is, you know. And, and Leadneck does come with some good leads, and I do reckon it's a company out of Maryland. Um, and they, they have a minimum of $1,500. I think the maximum you can pay is $5,000, depending okay. on how many leads you want. Okay. Sounds good. Perfect. So, um, can you just kind of tell us what are the steps to a successful wholesale deal? Yeah. Uh, first and foremost, wholesaling, like any business, is all about relationships. Mm -hmm. um, if you have relationship with people who have properties or people, or if you get a relationship, like I said, with a company that will generate you leads, um, that relationship will start off and help you out the gate in it, um, mm -hmm. right away. Um, but the relationship is only to get your foot in the door because you got to know how the second thing you got to do is have the contracts. Mm -hmm. um, and as a, as a mentor for other wholesalers, um, I always provide the contracts. I always write the contracts and you can have a realtor write you a contract. Okay. Um, and you can pay a realtor a fee to get you a contract. Normally they want to get a commission from it, but sometimes you can agree, Hey, if you give me 500 bucks for a contract, a purchase agreement. Um, okay, so like a flat fee. Like, yep, you can do it. You can work with it, a personal realtor. A lot of realtors will do it for next to nothing. Um, but the contracts is always the most important, where you have your, your initial contract with your A to B seller. And then you have two type of contracts you can do from there. There's what's called a, a purchase agreement, mm -hmm. where you're selling it to someone else and they're purchasing that property from you. And you have to do what's called a double close. Um, and with that double close, you're buying it and at the same time you're selling it at the same time so you do one transaction at once okay um and now that's a little bit more expensive because you have two sets of closing costs you have to pay for um sometimes many title companies actually require you to bring the purchase money and you have to fund the deal um that's the one thing i don't agree i don't really like about I'm um, doing a double close. So you fund it and then you get it back on the other end. Yeah, so you have to bring the 20000 <laughs> plus closing costs, but you'll get it back plus your money on the second half. Okay, so that would that mean taking out a loan for that situation you, you, or you could just... You can take out a loan. You can do what's called transactional funding. There's transactional companies mm -hmm. that'll, that'll fund it. They'll want to see your contracts. They'll want to see proof of funds from your end buyer. Um, and so you can do a double close they usually, the title company sometimes wants to see that money sit in escrow for two days. Also. Okay. So that's the one downfall about a double close. The good thing is um, that you get, if you want to accumulate sales on your mm -hmm. company, it'll show as a sale that you sold the property. Um, but uh, the other type of contract, which I preferably always recommend my clients use and those that I mentor, is an assignment contract. Okay. Which meaning that if I got the A to B contract for 20, I can assign my contract for 30. I pay no closing costs. The buyer on this on the second end pays all the fees and I walk away with a flat $10,000. And okay. I, it's called an assignment fee. 
So when you at the title company, they'll write you a check, and on the middle, it'll say assignment fee for ten thousand dollars. Okay. And so I is like that, that where you cleaner. just you write it in there that you know whatever your name is or assign, yep. and then you just flip it over. To Here's that. a negative thing. Sometimes when you get to the closing table, the assignment fee is on the HUD. So sometimes if I talked you down as a seller to twenty thousand and you really wanted thirty, you'll see I'm making ten thousand dollars. Oh. And, I, and I've had sellers walk away from closing tables because they see you making money. But it kind of—I feel like you know—it depends on how bad they want to sell the house, you know. Trust me, I've had a, <laughs> I've had where I was making a thousand bucks and they were getting eleven hundred bucks, I'm eleven thousand, and they didn't like me making money. They didn't want you to get your little ten percent. That, that's it. And, it wasn't <laughs> it. and I found the buyer. It was cash. They got what they wanted. But sometimes, but. They gotta I, be really motivated. I hear, I hear you. But or if you have that conversation up front, I'm going. I'm a wholesaler. I'm going to assign it. I'm not doing this for free. You're going to get what you agreed to. You can have that legit. That's why the relationship is important. Right. Um, Communication. Front. Yeah. And so, but the good thing is with the assignment, uh, if you, I always recommend if it's over four thousand dollars, double close it. Pay okay. the pay the closing fee. You don't have the drama. You don't have the headache. Um, and that keeps it so that they can't they see, don't see what, you what make. you're making. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like that's probably the be best way. Yeah, and you you might lose a thousand bucks in closing costs, but if you're making four or five grand, it secures the deal. Good money. Yeah. <laughs> um, the other thing, lastly, with the you got to find an investor friendly title company in your local city. That is vital because there's some title companies that don't allow wholesalers to do deals. Why is that? Um, they just it's not as clean. There's no law against it, but there's no law for it. But there's mm -hmm. laws for realtors. Realtors are under this whole umbrella. I'm not a licensed agent. And one reason why I'm not a licensed agent, because I don't like always following the rules. <laughs> <laughs> I can do what I want. And because uh, I'm my own company, I'm my own LLC. And, and you st I still get taxed. Mm -hmm. I still file taxes. It's all under my business. I still got to recognize it. But I don't have to follow my board laws. Right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I can write my own contracts. Play your own game. Think. Exactly. <laughs> and so when you do that, you can do that. If you're an agent, you can't really wholesale. You really can't. You have to disclose it, and it, it could be real muddy. Um, you know. So Indianapolis, a great title company that's I mean, investor friendly, is Monument Title. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, Investors Title is a good company. Um, and sometimes Meridian Title. Um, but even then, sometimes, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. these are great companies, um, and you just kind of got to be upfront and explaining them what you're doing, how you're doing it, and what and what they need for you to move forward. Right. All right. So for someone who is brand new at this, um, they want to do their first wholesale deal. Is there anything that you would tell them? You know, definitely avoid this. Don't do this. This will this will mess you up. Yeah. First and foremost, don't be dishonest. Whatever you're gonna do, be honest with each party you're dealing with because it could blow up legally and financially in your face. Mm -hmm. You know, I always make it clear with my um, my seller who's selling me the property that I'm a wholesaler, um, I'm working the deal, um, but I am gonna sell it to someone else. Mm -hmm. You don't always have to disclose that you're selling it to someone else, but you do want to make it clear the transaction and how things are going to work you know right. don't 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 set the expectations i always say um disappointment only comes in with unrealistic expectations sure so if i set the expectation hey we're going to close in two weeks it's going to be cash i try to honor that to the best of my ability and i try to make sure my buyer can can fulfill and normally the buyers i deal with i've done several transactions with um, and they know, hey, you got to bring that cash and we got to close in two weeks or 10 days or three days, depending on how motivated. If I'm getting a great deal, you got to close by the end of the week because mm -hmm. you're getting a steal. I'm getting a steal. And my seller, man, they can take a list this on the MLS. Yeah. And time, time, time kills money. deals. Yeah. <laughs> For so, sure. So just being honest, honesty is the best policy because if you lie, it always comes back around. It will. Yeah, so it might come back that. in a small way, but it'll come back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it might come back later, but it'll come back. That's true. Okay, perfect. Um, so how about, have you ever had any experience with wholesaling that was just like something really crazy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, two crazy stories, you know. Um, I, I never owned a gun until I went to this one property. I know it's got to be crazy, right? <laughs> 
Um, and um, I got a lead from a property, just word of mouth. Somebody said, hey, I got some properties. I want you to go check out. Um, I walk in the property and I can see like fresh poop. I know, right? Poop. I know. And I said maybe it's some dogs or something. I was going to say, I hope it's not a human. Yeah, yeah. And um, as soon as I opened the door, like one raccoon came. No. It was a baby. And I was like, oh, okay. So there's a bad. raccoon in the house. <laughs> Next thing you know, the mom and the dad came out and charged at the door. No. I don't think I've ever closed the door so fast. They were like, we live here. Yeah. And I, <laughs> what I, when I realized that they were protecting, there was other kid baby raccoons in there. They were being, just being protected. And so ever since then, I try to carry a gun, not for humans, but more for animals. You were going to shoot the raccoon? No, nah, I didn't shoot them. I sent somebody else out there to take care of them, and they got rid of them with no issues. They ran out of there. They okay. ended up just running out of there with no harm. No animals were uh, damaged or hurt in this filming. Thank God. So, um, got PETA coming for you. Yeah. No. Nah. I mean, we, honestly, I think I have more problems when I go see properties with animals than humans. Okay. I, know. Well, I mean, that's good. We never have really problems with people. Because <laughs> most of the time, animals won't come for you. <laughs> yeah, but people will. Um, and so, but no, nah, those those raccoons came charging. That was probably the scariest moment. But on the positive side, though, I was rehabbing a property and um, had an older guy um, that lived behind it. Mm -hmm. And we had to tear the fence down. But we we're going to build a new fence. So when I knocked on his door to let him know, hey, I'm going to build you a fence. I just wanted to let you know. Are you okay with it? He says, come in here right now and i was like <laughs> okay i don't know what this was about i've never seen this man in my life i just see him like sweeping his yard and cleaning up and um he says hey i got 17 properties i want to sell oh do you want to buy them i said of course i do um uh, so boom wholesaling came up in my mind immediately yeah i'm gonna buy them but i'm gonna sell them and when he gave me the addresses to him i just dollar signs is going through my head <laughs> because i knew like man i can make a lot of money on this you're like, I'm not holding on to nothing. Oh, no. We, and so we, we worked a good agreement. We put a package. We only, I only ended up selling nine of those. Okay. We ended up keeping most of them. But um, we, we made six figures on that deal. And and the only way I got that lead was being in the neighborhood, working on another house. And he saw me out there mm -hmm. and invited me in. You did um, a good deed and we, you got some houses for exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> we, we didn't tear down his fence without permission. We mm -hmm. knocked and just... You know, and you know, and I told him, um, you know, hey, I'm gonna make money on this. So, and believe it or not, when I first went there and I saw the properties, you know, he said, hey, I need X amount of money for these, mm -hmm. and I was at half the price of where he was at in order for me to make money. Yeah. And we we walked away at first saying we weren't gonna do a deal, but then little behold, when the first of the month came around, tenants didn't pay rent, <laughs> taxes were coming due. He called me back and says, okay, I'll give you this. And it was about 5% more of where I was at, and I took it. Okay. And we made a lot of money, you know. And that's when I realized I could do this full time. Absolutely. I was, I was working a job at the time while I was working on my flip. And uh, when those checks started coming in while I was at my job, I said, hey, I'm putting my two weeks notice. <laughs> Sometimes that's all it takes is just like a little success for you to be like, I got this. Yeah. 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 <laughs> now, I, I believe that all things happen. I'm a... Uh, I'm a man of God, so I believe all things happen for a reason, and mm -hmm. that was a leap of faith, and uh, thank God I haven't looked back. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Being your own boss is the yeah. best, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, we talked a little bit before. You have a new ebook coming out. Yep. Um, how to build a property in seven days? Yep, how to build a house in seven days. Okay, let's talk about that a little um, bit. So it's a seven-page ebook. It's very easy to read. It's free. Um, so I'm not looking to make any money on it. People like uh, that word. Yeah. You know, <laughs> in this industry, knowledge is money, you know, and so me to share information is uh, beneficial. It, you know, um, again, I believe that the Bible teaches in Proverbs that wisdom is uh, greater than riches because mm -hmm. the more you know, the more money you'll make. True. You know, so if you don't know anything, you can't do anything. Get in those books. <laughs> yeah. And um, so it's a seven-page uh, book, and it's a seven and it's every every chapter, every seven chapter is actually based on a Bible verse. Okay. Um, and so it builds to the end, you know, first chapter about preparation. You know, Jesus says, um, no man goes to build a house without first looking at what it's going to cost. Counting the cost um, is the first chapter. And so before you go into anything, you need to figure out, well, how much is this going to cost? How long is it going to take? Um, who am I going to have? Preparation. 
Mm -hmm. You gotta you gotta prepare for greatness. For um, sure. So each each one each chapter builds up to the end on how to formulate a property. So um, right now I'm doing five new construction properties. Okay. And we legitimately the house we're at we got up in six days. Wow. Um, we're here um, in in Little Flower, and we got this ranch, three bedroom, two bath, two car garage up in six days. Nice. Um, Fast workers. <laughs> yeah. I mean, these, you know, this is how to build a house in seven days. But technically, these principles, as it says, it comes from the Bible, are good for a life too. Mm. You know, you got to prepare. Help you on any project. Yeah, even yeah. In, in your everyday life. You know, you can. You got to before you wake up. You got to prepare. You know, you got to know what you're going to do. You just wake up taking it day by the horn is you never gonna get anything <laughs> just bumble it around <laughs> yeah I, I think i'll go to work today well I, I plan to go to work and before i go to work i get the clothes out i know my schedule what time am i going to leave all that mm -hmm. stuff i try to plan for greatness absolutely uh, you it know, doesn't just fall in your lap nobody gets great by accident <laughs> nobody very you know. true okay so it sounds like a really interesting book so where can we find it it'll be um on amazon it'll be ebook um we're looking the first of the year so uh, okay. in january it's how to build a house in seven days okay and um it's a seven page free ebook quantrail turner all right um and um you know that at the end of it again it doesn't cost anybody anything but it's more of principles that if you just open your bible those principles are in there also so that then generally most bibles are free <laughs> you just have to take the time and invest in it so i uh, believe in investing in god and trusting in god and i believe that's why i am where i am today absolutely so um, i'm gonna go ahead and put the contact information for control and his book in the description section so if you guys want to reach out to him if you want to get his ebook uh, you know where to go. All right, Quintrell. So I thank you so much for talking to me today. Um, before we sign off, is there anything else that you want to add? Any words of wisdom? Anything else that um, you want to cover? No, just that um, I want to encourage everybody to uh, think about um, endeavoring to real estate. Um, real estate is what sets people financially apart from others. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm a, um, I have a finance degree. And um, I worked for the Capital Group in Carmel. It's an um, advisement company for three years. And the thing that I saw every day, especially for minorities, is that we didn't have our hand in real estate and life insurance and things like that, which sets people apart in the 1% from the 99%. Mm -hmm. um, and, and um, you know, I'm one who, as a child, grew up. I think our house, we were Section 8. I went to school on a Pell Grant. You know, all these things that were kind of government sponsored, but I always had my mind that I would make my own money and give back to society. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's why I love doing what I'm doing now. I'm building in areas like Brightwood and Little Flower, where other people don't get this type of opportunity to own properties and rentals. And we're doing it at a fair price. Mm -hmm. our, our properties are fair. That's important. Everything. So we, we want to give back to those. And um, in these type, this type of information, um, I, I love to share. I share it for free. I don't charge anybody. And even when we code so code deals, it's beneficial for me and everybody else. Because so. mm -hmm. when you teach, you learn. Yeah. So. <laughs> and honestly, even when I work a deal, I learn something every day on every new deal. So don't be afraid. It's, sometimes this takes out going on faith. Anybody tells you it costs an arm and a leg, they probably don't have a legitimate business. Um, you know. But if anything, that it takes a, the right investment, you can make it happen. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, well again, thank you so much for being here thank today you. and sharing your knowledge with us. Uh, you guys, as usual, I will see you back again with a new video next week.